Hey everyone, it's Andrew Brown, and in this follow along, we're going to play around with e-tags in S3 to see how we can uh, best utilize them. So we obviously have this AWS examples repo. I've opened it up in Gitpod. You use whatever you like, but this is where I'm going to be working. And I already have my environment variables loaded up so that I can uh, use the AWS CLI. We are gonna be using Terraform. We do have a separate video on how to set up the Terraform CLI. The instructions are also in peer uh, in this file here as um, uh, the script. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and create a new folder in here. I'm just gonna call it e-tags. And basically the, the thing that I wanna show you what you can do with e-tags is to use it to programmatically detect when changes occur because that is basically uh, the good use case for it. So I'm creating a new main TF file here. And I wanna write some uh, Terraform. So what we'll do is we'll make our way over to the Terraform registry where we can get some configurations. Now, if you're watching this in the future, AWS is always changing, or Terraform is always changing the way the AWS register works. So you might have to fiddle around with this to get it to work, but hopefully it works the first go. Here we have the provider. So I'll go ahead and grab that here, paste it on in. And so we have HashCorp AWS uh, 5.30, et cetera, et cetera. There's two things I wanna do. I wanna create an S3 bucket, and I wanna create an S3 object. So in the documentation here, if we type in S3, we will find the resource uh, AWS S3 bucket, and we can go ahead and copy this. So you'll notice that it is um, supplying the uh, name here, but if we take out the bucket name, it will randomly generate, and we don't have to do anything for it. I'm just gonna call this bucket so that it's straightforward. Actually, we can just call it default. I actually prefer that. Um, do we need any meta tags on there? No, no thank you. So this should go ahead and create a bucket. It should pick up my AWS credentials locally, um, because I've set them via environment variables. That's one way of uh, pulling them up. You might have to do some additional configuration here, which would appear if we go to the documentation, uh, it's usually the first page here. So if you go right here and read about it, you can see the different ways that you can authenticate. But again, I'm using environment variables. It's the easiest way to do it. But if you're using configuration file, you'll have to do maybe something a little bit different, like configure uh, the profile to be used. So if I type in here, yeah, right there. So it says profile and chooses it. Anyway, let's go back over to S3. And in here, we should be able to create objects directly. Now, in infrastructure as code, you're not really supposed to use um, create uh, objects because they're kind of a data component, not infrastructure. But there are use cases where you might want to utilize them. And it makes a great example for e-tags. Uh, what's this? Multi-language provider script. Oh, you can write Terraform in Python now and other languages. Constructs, that's for CDK, Terraform stack. Okay. I'm sorry, it's just new. I never saw that there before. But I'm gonna go back over to Terraform default. And here it's saying that uh, this resource is deprecated and now to use this one here. So we'll go ahead and type that in. And you really have to watch out for these changes because they do this all the time, <laughs> uh, change things. But anyway, so this is gonna help us grab this information here. I'm gonna paste this on down below. And so the idea is that we have a bucket and we want to create an object within it. So here, this is gonna be a resource, um, AWS S3 bucket default. And then the key name here is just gonna be my file.txt. And then we can supply a source. So I'm just gonna make a new file here. We'll just say myfile.txt, hello Mars. And we'll go here and say, I think this is relative. So we can probably just type in myfile.txt and it should pick it up uh, relative to this file here. And then we have our e-tag. Now we shouldn't have to set an e-tag. I'm pretty sure it will automatically set one for us but it looks like we can generate one out ourselves. So yeah, I don't really want to um, change the tag, but what I'm gonna do here is let's go ahead, we'll just comment this out here. Let's go ahead and deploy this. And so what I'm expecting to get is a bucket and an object in it, right? So I'm here on my Terraform tab. I have Terraform CLI installed if I type this in. I mean, I should. Are you serious? <laughs> Where's my Terraform CLI? Okay, um, you know, if it's not there, I'm just gonna go ahead and just make another folder here. This will be great for the future, but I'm just gonna go ahead and just go Terraform CLI install. 
You already have the script because you'll be able to see it, but I'm just going to modify this because I actually like this to be a different way, to be honest. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and place this in here. And I'm going to bring this over like this. And I want to create this a, as a bash script, so I just need um, this header here. Okay, this is just going to allow me to install it and isolate, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Bin Terraform CLI, and we'll go back over to wherever this is. This is in um, somewhere here. Here we go. And so instead of doing that, I'm just going to write run source bin um, Terraform CLI install sh. And that way, uh, that I don't have to, uh, I can keep this kind of a bit thinner. This is this is a really good way. I should have done that with PowerShell and all the other ones, but whatever. And I'm gonna go ahead and just do that. So let's go ahead and run that and see if that installs it. While I'm here, I might as well just do that for the rest. AWS CLI install, PowerShell. CLI install sh. And yeah, if you're watching, you're like, Andrew, these videos are a little bit inconsistent. Well, it's just the life of a developer. You got to figure things out and work through these issues. But I'm just going to go ahead and just do this now to get these out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Not what we're here to be watching, but that's fine. Save that, bring that back a level, go here, bring this back a level, and I'm just gonna go ahead and just go bin, PowerShell, CLI install, .sh, okay. I mean, this, this is really nice because it's a lot more modular, uh, AWS. Still I install, there we go. There we go, that's nice. Anyway, um, and I'll just chamod all of those, all of those there. Bin and asterisk, great. So anyway, uh, we should have Terraform CLI installed and we do, look at that, no problems there. And what I'm gonna do is type in Terraform init, that's going to initialize uh, the project and download anything that we need for there. I think our git ignore already ignores Terraform save files. Make sure you're ignoring all this stuff. Just type in Terraform git ignore and get all that good stuff from GitHub so that you're ignoring stuff and not committing these to your repo. But anyway, um, we've done a Terraform init. This isn't in the wrong directory. So I'm gonna have to S S3 into the E tags here or CD into it. We'll type, type in Terraform init because it's expecting to find that main TF file. It's downloading the providers and the required stuff that we need. I'm gonna type in clear. I'm gonna go ahead and type in Terraform plan. So this is a very simple script. We shouldn't have any issues with it. Uh, requires explicit configuration, add a provider block to, to the block uh, there. Now there's nothing really we need to configure. So what I'll do is I'll go back over to here. I'll type in AWS uh, here as the provider block. And it should now hopefully work. No, it doesn't like that. I guess I supposed to put provider in front of it. So in here, this is where you would uh, configure things like uh, other configuration methods or your, the default profile. I'm not gonna go ahead and do that. It's all gonna default to CA Central one anyway. And uh, I mean, this should work. Retrieving AWS account details, validating provider credentials. Um, 403, line 10, well, what's your problem here? I'm gonna make sure that uh, I'm actually connected to my AWS account. So we'll do AWS STS, and I'm gonna hit enter. Um, I'll do this on my AWS command here so I can uh, get the auto completion. I can never seem to spell get caller identity. I always mess it up somehow. See? Even when it was auto completing, I still messed it up. I dent to T. There we go. And so it looks like there's um, a configuration issue here. So give me a moment, I'll go ahead and fix it. So I just loaded my credentials in, but um, uh, maybe I did not export them. So just give me a moment, okay? All right, so I ran an issue. It looks like I copied the um, 
<laughs> the example key, and that's why it's not working. So I'm gonna have to go regenerate my credentials, load them back in here. I'll be back in just a moment. All right, so we should be in better shape now. I'm gonna just double check here, get caller identity. And so now I am logged in, so I can go ahead and do my Terraform plan. And so that should allow us to create an object in a bucket. So here it's going to say, we'll create a, a bucket, that's great. And then incorrect attribute value type for here. Um, maybe we have to put name on the end here like this. Go ahead and hit up. Um, I mean, that should work. The object has no argument name. Okay, what am I doing wrong here? It should be pretty straightforward. Oh, you know what? I'm putting the word resource in front of it here. We don't need to specify that, I don't think. Let's try this again. Or if we do, yeah, so their example, they don't do it. So we'll try this again. Okay, we'll take off the name. Okay, what does it want? It was S3 bucket default. ID, well, I mean, this one's using an ID. Maybe it wants an ID instead, we'll try that. I mean, name and ID should return the same thing. There we go. And maybe maybe I'm mistaken, but when you look at uh, the stuff here, we go down below, it'll tell us what they are. So ID, I guess it's ID, I thought it was name. And we don't need resource in front of there. So what this should do is it should pull up this file and send it to S3. It's going to create these two objects. We're gonna go ahead and type in Terraform, whoops. <laughs> Uh, and this got changed back to here. So we'll say Terraform, apply, auto approve, because I don't want to hit the yes. I just wanted to go up there and upload it. And so it's going to go ahead and create it. Now remember the state file is being created locally. So make sure you don't leave and delete the state file or you'll have to clear this out manually. So now that that is done, let's go take a look and see if we can actually see that object uh, in there. So I'm going to say AWS S3. Uh, I cleared that out. So I don't actually know what the bucket name is now, but we did write a command earlier to list out all the recent buckets. There's one here somewhere. If we go to uh, our common commands, this, this is earlier, but we have some bash scripts and we can say, get newest bucket. So this is the command that I have here. So go ahead and grab this. It's in the repo, you can just get it too. And so what that will do is return the last bucket. So this is the randomly generated bucket that we have here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that and we're gonna say uh, AWS S3 um, LS. And then I'm gonna say S3 colon slash slash, and then we'll paste that in there and hit enter. And we'll see if we can see the contents of the file. So there it is. We wanna go ahead and download that and see if we can um, see its contents. So we're gonna go and type in AWS S3 API, um, get object, and we'll say bucket. And from there, it's actually easier than that. We can just do AWS S3. So AWS S3 copy, and we'll say S3 colon forward slash slash this stuff here like that. And I'll say forward slash my file.txt. And I think that if we pipe it to cat, it should just print it out. Um, and the problem is I just have some additional duplication here. I think it was S3 CP. No, no, that's right. Okay. Maybe I'll just do my file.txt like this. Okay. Definitely download the file. <laughs> Um, so I just wanted to cat it out. Let's just go ask ChatGPT. How do we download a file from S3 and print it straight to the terminal? I could have swore what we could do is just pipe it like that. Okay, in one line <laughs> using, the, using the AWS CLI. Oh, it's, it's this, okay. So I was kind of close. And I don't think it supplies a name. Yeah, so normally what you do is you supply a name as the third parameter that you want to download the file as. But so what we're doing is you're just putting this hyphen and then it looks like it carries it over uh, to the cat and then it prints it out. Okay, so it's downloading the file and so we can see that's the contents online. All right. And, um, so that's pretty clear. So the thing is, is that what we wanna do is we want to see 
if we can update this object. So I'm going to go ahead and change the contents of this file and say, hello world. And I'm going to go back here. I'm going to do Terraform plan. So I've changed this file, right? I've changed this file. Does Terraform know that I've changed this file? And notice it says no changes. Well, how can that be, right? I changed the contents of this file and it's saying that there's no structural changes because this has no idea what the contents of, of this file is, okay? It has no idea what it is. So we need to tell it that it's changed. And so the way we do that is by um, uh, generating out an MD5 hash of the E tag and, and supplying it. Uh, and, and that would probably be the best way to do that. So what we'll do is go over here and let's go back to S3 object. And notice here it's saying E tag file MD5 file to path, because that is what the E tag is gonna be. It's gonna be an MD5 generally of it. It might vary based on how AWS generates it out, but it's saying, let's get the file, generate MD5 and assign it to the E tag and that's how we'll know what it is. So what we'll do is type in my file dot TXT. And so now we'll try this again. We'll do Terraform plan. And it will notice the changes because Terraform is going to uh, now track the E tag change. And that's how we're gonna be able to have this object state um, tracked anytime we change it. So here it's saying, oh, the E tag has changed because obviously we generated a new one here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and say Terraform apply. I will say auto approve. And we'll go ahead and deploy that. Could we do this with CloudFormation? Probably not. CloudFormation S3 object. Okay, notice like I'm trying to look up object and I'm not getting it. So um, the thing is, is that um, there is no CloudFormation for an S3 object. And the reason why is that an object is data. It's not really supposed to be part of infrastructure, but Terraform can make anything, uh, anything as long as it's an API uh, man manageable as if it's infrastructure. And so this is just one of those edge cases but the reason I'm showing you, to, you this is because this is a good use case for e tags. So anyway, it's it's done a change here, and so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and make sure this works by changing it one more time. So we'll say hello Jupiter, and let's see if it um, picks up those changes. Okay, and it noticed that something has changed, right? This isn't random. It's every time we use MD5, it's always going to come up with the same value. So if something changes in here, it will change the e tag. It allows us to track it. So that's all I really wanted to show you for e tags as a practical example. I'm going to go ahead here and just commit this as my e tag example. So we'll just say refactor uh, refactor bash scripts and um, provide e tag example. There we go. We'll go ahead and commit that. I'm going to just uh, sync that there or make sure it goes up. Sync, sync, sync. And I'm going to just do a terraform destroy. I probably should have hit auto approve there because that's going to tear down that bucket and that object since I don't need it anymore. We'll just say yes, tear that on down. And we'll just give it a second here to tear down. Still destroying. We'll give it a second, okay? There we go, it's done and I'll see you in the next one, okay? Ciao.